Hello everybody, Mobius1 here, bringing you a new series. Um, basically, this is going to just be kind of like a little talk show. You guys can put it on and play another game while you listen in. Almost like a podcast, but not a podcast. Um, and we're always going to talk about something Star Wars related. So, since today uh, is E3, day zero of E3, uh, EA had their press conference. And at the very end, they saved for us some actual gameplay footage of Star Wars Battlefront. Uh, I am joined today by Takora and Koro Sin. You guys want to say hello? Hello. Hello. So, Koro has actually already seen this gameplay footage. Takora and I have been waiting. Are you really sending me pictures of Star Wars nails, nail polish? No, I'm <laughs> sending you Star Wars things, but it's not a fingernails. All right. Do I have to look at it now? I'm. I, I am would. honestly surprised you waited this long to even view this. I bet he didn't. I bet he snuck down. No, you know what? on his phone. I totally thought about it, but I didn't do it. And I am definitely one that would do that, so I don't... I don't... Yes. I do not uh, doubt that you, that, you, that you think I did that, because I did definitely back when... Before Star Wars Episode Three came out the script was leaked online and I actually went and read the entire script for Star Wars Episode 3 before the movie came out and then when I went and saw it in theaters for the first time I'm watching it and I'm like wait they cut they cut a scene out what, what, ha what happened to that scene that I read about in the script and people were looking at me like what I remember this so I wasn't around for that I uh no it was a little bit before your time I, I want to start a tradition real quick before we watch this, uh, a tradition for this series. Uh, since I'm going to have different guests on for each episode, I think it would be nice if at the start of each episode, we uh, the guests tell us a little bit about how you first discovered and fell in love with Star Wars. So Tick, why don't you tell us a little bit about that? <laughs> this is going to date me, but okay. So... Um... Back in the day when I was a youngin, um, they actually were selling cable door to door. So whereas okay. now, like, no, I'm not even kidding. Like now you can like call up and be like, yo, I need some cable <laughs> service. Do you have some time to spend to talk about our Lord and Savior Comcast? <laughs> exactly. It's the <laughs> Jehovah Saviors of uh, cable. No, they seriously were. They were going door to door. And I remember, I've, I vividly remember this, and I might have been 10 or 11, and this guy comes in the house, and he's sitting, I remember he had a clipboard, and he was explaining it all to my dad about these, these movies or whatever that we could get, and we were like the first people on the block to sign up for cable, which was like, we had no money, so the fact that we did this was amazing. And the way that I encountered Star Wars was one of the very first channels you could get on cable was HBO. And they would play the movies over and over and over again. So on I HBO. must have seen on HBO, straight up. That would be a totally different Star Wars if HBO had it on now. Why? Never mind. Oh, all right. Well, any oh, I get it. Never mind. I'm a little slow. So we would watch it. Like, because b back in the day, you know, you had maybe, like, five channels you could watch on TV before cable. And so we would constantly have HBO on to play the movies. So I must have seen Star Wars, like, 27 times in a, in a matter of months. Now, here's the kicker about my Star Wars love affair. I did not see The Empire Strikes Back until, I'm going to say... 15 years later but I then went to see Return of the Jedi in the movie theaters when it was released so I saw episode 4 so you've seen Star Wars in a completely unique order yes I saw 4 then 6 then wow. 5 yeah I know so imagine like trying to figure out like what the heck happened with missing like The Empire Strikes Back yeah so I'm sorry I can't help but think of like Force of Thrones, if Star Wars was on HBO. <laughs> 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 well, 
Well, I, I'm not gonna lie, I would like to see what a Twi'lek looks naked, but that's just me. Uh, I believe there are mods you can download for that, but moving on. <laughs> Koro, how would you like to, would you like to discuss your first experience with Star Wars? I mean, yeah, I can. Uh, not as great an elaborate story as Tix was, but, uh, I mean, I'm comfortable saying I was a 90s kid growing up, so I obviously came to the party a, a little later, and, um... I don't exactly remember when it happened, but it was it was shortly after um, my family got a little bit bigger. Um, the new father figure in my life and his kids were actually all avid Star Wars fans. Um, and when we all moved in together, uh, we had converted our garage into almost like a family room, like a playroom. And um, we had this wall that was just lined with all them old VHS tapes and very prominently um, there was um, like right in the middle of the wall was like the original trilogy and one night I kind of asked like what were they about and um, my stepdad still uh, went into this whole tirade trying to explain the whole thing um my like new brother at the time was trying to explain to me why it was all great so we actually had this one big family night where well it probably turned into more of a family day but we actually watched the entire trilogy from beginning to end and that had to have been like the best day ever the growing up because <laughs> i if I remember correctly, I believe we even took off from school to <laughs> to do this. We parenting one hundred and one. He made it such like a special day. I think that's why like Star Wars rung or struck like such a big chord, like um, growing up, uh, and why it's still like fresh in my mind. And I don't know. It, it was just it was awesome. Like I. I didn't see anything like it uh, um, around the time, like growing up in the 90s, you had freaking, like, you're just quickly thrown together comedy movies, which are still classics to this day, but, like, I, I remember growing up with, like, um, like, Jim Carrey movies and stuff like that, but uh, when it comes to sci-fi, there, there wasn't really, um, from what I have seen up until that point, anything quite like it, and it... I mean, as a young kid, it just blew me away. So I, I just haven't been able to turn back ever since. And luckily for me, growing up in the 90s, I didn't have long to wait for the new trilogy to come out. And I mean, they were what they were, but here's hoping the, the new trilogy's a little better. Yeah, that was much shorter than my story. Good job. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I am timing this, so uh, hopefully... This this is kind of a pilot for this series, so we'll see how long we talk for. But I'm I'm hoping I'm aiming somewhere beyond the one hour mark, but oh not God. not uh not near two hours. So like maybe ninety minutes. We'll see how it goes. But I'm also going to try to do it with as little editing as possible. So you'll get, what you hear is what you get. Um, I'm not going well since this is the first episode. I will ex I will talk about my first experience with Star Wars. Uh, but obviously, since I'm going to be having this conversation with every group of guests on the series, I'm not going to explain to everyone. But So you guys are the unlucky two. Great. Yeah, that's all right. Um, anyway, I think the very first time I ever saw anything Star Wars was actually in a toy store. It was, I don't remember which toy store. It was either like Toys R Us or it might have actually been Walmart. And I was real young, like maybe three or four, and for whatever reason, my mom had brought me there to pick out a toy. And we're walking down the aisle, and she was like, you can have anything you want, just one thing, pick it out. And as I'm walking down the aisle, I see this box kind of high up on a shelf, out of my reach, that had about eight figures in it. And one of the figures was holding, like, this blue stick in his hand. And I pointed at it and the box looked real pretty the box had like stars on it and you know real fancy science fiction and i pointed at it and i was like hey you know mom what's that 
because I couldn't reach it myself. So she had to get it off the shelf for me. And as she took it off the shelf, she looked at it and she was like, oh, wow, they're bringing this back? And she hands it down to me and it was basically, it was like a Stormtrooper, Darth Vader, Luke Skywalker, Princess Leia, Han Solo, Chewbacca, R2-D2, and C-3PO, all rubber figures about six inches tall all in one box and since my mom said I could have one thing I said this is what I want because I get why would you get you know a single action figure when you could get a box with eight so I actually ended up playing with Star Wars figures before I even had any idea what it was but it was the fact that Luke Skywalker was holding a lightsaber that caught my eye and it was like ever since then being the Jedi was the coolest thing and you still play with these toys to this day I don't still play with them but I do still have them you play with them. Shh, only in the bath. <laughs> um, oh, dark helmet. Oh, oh. <laughs> no, sir, I did not see you playing with your dolls. Good. <laughs> One more interesting or funny story, though. Since you talked about the unusual order that you saw the movies in, Tick, uh, I actually, the first time I ever actually watched Star Wars was when they they showed it on TV, I don't know what channel it was, and my parents taped it for me on VHS. Unfortunately, they only had two empty VHS tapes when they premiered and they pre or they showed all three movies in the same night. So we f they fit all of a new hope on the first tape. And then on the second tape, they fit all of Empire Strikes Back. And then only up to the part where Luke tells Leia that she's his sister in Return of the Jedi. Okay, and it, spoiler alert for people who haven't seen the, the movie. And the video cut. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Please, if if you're watching the series and you don't already know what happened in Star Wars, you need to go watch the movies and come back. Crawl out of your rock. <laughs> go watch the movies. <laughs> So for the longest time, I I thought that was the end of Empire Strikes Back when Luke told Leia about their heritage. I never knew about the Battle of Endor, the fate of Darth Vader, or any of that until much, much later. I don't know how much later, but it was and it was years. And then he hated his parents forever. Well, I remember watching on TV, and I'm like, wow. And you know what it was? I think it was when the special edition came out. Because I remember watching it in the theater going, wow, they sure added a lot to this movie. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah, because the special edition came out on, on VHS back in like 90-something, 90 95 or something, like really a long time ago. And, uh, and yeah, I, I totally had no idea. I watched that and I was like, wow, I... I thought this ended way long ago. But yeah. Alright, so... So, Battlefront. Uh, what do you guys know? Well, obviously, Cora, you know a lot about it already. Yeah, I'll, I'll go a little light. Um, Tick, you haven't played Battlefront before, but you've played Battlefield. Um, same thing, right? It is the same thing. I have so, a lightsaber instead of a gun. I should be good. For those that don't know, though I'm sure many of you do, uh, Battlefield... Is a is basically a PvP player versus player first person shooter, made by Dice and published by EA. That uh, is it's always been like a modern and a World War Two modern military and uh, twenty one forty two was a science fiction shooter game I guess team based. I still um, want a sequel. When did yeah twenty one forty two twenty one forty three would be awesome. Do you know when the original Battlefront came out? Who, me? I mean, if this was a professional show, we'd have um, all this information researched already, but hey, we could just wing it. I don't know. I just remember that uh, I could tell you the year I started playing Battlefield 2, but that's pretty much all I could tell you. 2004. 2004 is when the original Battlefront came out, right? Yes. Yeah, we gotta be careful with our battles here. Yeah, Battlefront and Battlefield. Okay, so Battle Star Wars Battlefront was made by, I think, Pandemic. Do you still have it up? Pandemic. Nice. Yep. Pandemic Good. and uh, the now defunct, quote-unquote, LucasArts. Right. 
Um, and it was actually, from the very beginning, it was supposed to be a Battlefield clone. It was basically the same game, just wrapped in a Star Wars skin. Um, you did have the option of going into third person, which was, was a nice, you know, it was a little refreshing. Um, but you had plenty of vehicles that you could hop into, you had different weapon classes that you could choose from. So, and you could play as both the Rebels and the Empire. Uh, as well as they had, they had both the Galactic Civil War and the Clone Wars era, so you could also play as the Republic or the Separatists. So it was, it was interesting. Then Battlefront 2 came out a couple years later. They added space battles. They added like a Galactic Conquest mode that let you tactically go from planet to planet uh, and take over the galaxy. And there were rumors of a Battlefront 3 coming out. A couple years ago, like two or three years ago, there was some leaked footage that showed like uh, land to space transitions and all. Yeah, that exactly. Jazz. Planetary, uh, like atmosphere to space, seamless transitions, which was really amazing. And then unfortunately, Pandemic went. I think it was Pandemic that was still producing that at that time, but whatever studio owned it, uh, they went bankrupt and sold the rights to the game to some other studio but kept that technology so unfortunately i don't think we'll be seeing that in this new battlefront game but here we are now disney uh owns what used to be lucas arts and they are making their own uh well what's it ea now uh actually since ea owns dice which is the company that made battlefield we're getting a true bat a star wars battlefield game now made from the same developers of battlefield which is really exciting at least to me Um, you guys ready to watch the, the video then? I mean, I'm waiting. I'm excited for you. <laughs> I'm excited. I'm, I'm upset that it's only 5 minutes and 16 seconds. Um, Tick, we'll do, you want, savor it. do you want to maybe pull this up? I'll send it to you so you can watch it at the same time as us and not just Certainly. on delay on my stream. There, I put it in TeamSpeak. Because I'm not on Steam, I closed it. I don't want to get notifications. Uh, hold on, I don't know if I can see it yet. You have to click where uh, the channel name we're in at the bottom. Oh, I thought you put it in the chat. Hold on. Should come up at the two second mark. At the bottom, where it says Corosin Sabak. Yep, I got it. Okay. I got it. I'm paused at two seconds where it could be inappropriate for yes. you. That's Excellent. That's been on this video since I started the video. May contain content inappropriate for children. I figured I didn't have to say anything if the video already did. Alright, tell me when to hit play. Alright, ready? We'll do a countdown. Three, two, one, go. Oh my god, I love it! <laughs> following is actual multiplayer gameplay footage. My favorite part on a PlayStation 4. Man, I'm cold. Oh, cold right now. This looking. That frame rate, though. Gotta love it. Textures are amazing. I love the simplistic, like, heads-up display. I wonder what this bright light's gonna do to your graphics card. Inappropriate contact number 61. Wow. Oh my god. <laughs> the rebels have activated the uplink. Move on that position. Just lost their uplink. Tie fighter incoming. There's your third There's the third person. That's just incredible. You just want to stare at like jetpacks. Oh, he is wearing a jetpack. We I wasn't sure if it was a jetpack or just a backpack, but it's definitely a jetpack. Oh, 
I mean, Aww. he could have pulled yes. that out first instead of running away from it. Well done. It's marching. Have activated the uplink station. We must shut it down. Is oh, see, they said the ATATs weren't going to be drivable, but they are. They oh. oh my god, that's called a Titan. Oh, I want to do that, whatever that means. <laughs> 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 Hang in there. Oh my god. Going in. Is he gonna deploy cables? Tell me he does. You know he is. The music too is just unbelievable. The walker is exposed. Focus all firepower on it. Bombers are making their attack roll. Go in for the takedown. Oh snap! Oh, yep. Yeah. It's just beautiful. I'm like, they're saying the same things they say in Insurgency. He almost got decapitated by that. Yes, yes, yes. Can we pre order okay. now? Yes. <laughs> Prophet's like, yes, you can, I already did. Hold on, I need to get a tissue. <laughs> we need to pre order! Alright, so. Before I start reading the negative things I'm getting in stream chat, first impressions go. Well? I'm gonna leave it to you at first. I, I gave you mine. I needed to go change my pants. You guys talk while I do that. Oh, wait. I gotta turn this off. Turn that off. Your YouTube thing is still going. What? Never, never mind. That was your YouTube thing, dingy. I don't think so. Good. All right. Whatever. Well, I'm gonna tell you straight up. I'm not flying those planes. Not happening. That's all. That's all you. <laughs> okay. You know, I can't I cannot fly those. Well, uh if they do there's a good chance we'll get multi passenger vehicles. If they copy what's been done in prior battlefront installments. Uh, okay, so I can't can I go down the ladder to sit in a twirly chair and shoot things? Sort of, in a manner of speaking, sure. Oh, I can fly right. and you can shoot. Which means you'll still need an air or uh, air sickness bag. I gotta say it it reminded me. You're, I don't know if you're gonna like this, but watching that reminded me of some of the 2142 gameplay. Well, that's it should right because it's made by the same studio. Yes, it should, but I, it actually did because I remember playing that and we had to deal with people on the ground, people moving in vehicles, air issues. So the elements of it are oh, still. Shit, I know they're not planes. I say funny things just to. Stop. Um, 
it just was very 2142. So if we could actually have like, do you remember we had to take the Titans in 2142? If we actually have a mode where we have to like take the Death Star, that would be badass. Yeah, so in Battlefront 2, the space battles were very much like Titan mode in Battlefield. Did I say Battlefield 2 or Battlefront 2? Battlefront. Okay, you said Battlefront. See, I can't even remember what I say now. But, uh, so the... In Battlefront 2, the space battles, each team had, like, a capital ship that had different hard points on the external. And you had... Once you destroyed, like, the shield generator... You had the option of either continuing to bombard the hard points outside the ship, or you could take like a transport ship over, board the enemy ship, and try to blow it up from the inside. So it was very Battlefield uh, 2142 inspired, so I can't imagine that this... Now, I do remember reading an article, and again it could be a lie, uh, that ba this Battlefront is not going to have space battles in it at launch. They're going to be added through DLC at some point after. But I can't imagine in that DLC they won't do something similar. I mean, everybody's dying for it. God, this is so challenging. Like, pre-order on Origin for PC, also on PS4, Xbox One. The Deluxe Edition versus not. I'll probably be getting it for both PC and PS4. You are such a nerd. That's why we love it. Apparently, if you order the deluxe edition, you get an ion grenade and an ion <laughs> torpedo. So great. Yeah, so. I mean, but. Alright, so let me read some of the stuff that's been saying in stream, in, uh, stream chat. So, Kyle said, Y'all do realize it isn't gonna look like this, right? I'm guessing, what do you mean, like, the actual gameplay's not Go gonna look like that? Go through the Watch Dogs treatment? No, it probably well, do you... won't look exactly like that. It's optimized for the... the yeah, um, but I think... I don't think he means the graphics exactly. I think he means the gameplay. Like, it's... It was much highly... What's the word I'm looking for? Overly coordinated, I guess, for that video. That real in a real game, real players won't work that well together. Okay, well, Kyle has never played with you and I when we do our strategy on how to actually play these types of games. Is that I know the stream is delayed, Kyle, but is that what you meant, or do you mean just the graphics-wise? Because yeah, like like Takora said, these all of these E3 trailers are highly optimized, and some of them are even a little bit pre-scripted so that uh, they can make the game look better than it does. And, and that's not exactly right, but it's not really anything you can do about it. Um, they also said that the AT-ATs still are not drivable, that they're just on rails and you have control over the gun turrets. I don't care. I mean, that was, that was amazing. That was still really cool. Yeah, I mean, even if that was the case, like, it, it's... It's still not a bad thing to do at all because I know um, in the old uh, Battlefronts when you would play the Hoth level and you'd sit in the AT-AT, uh, I know a lot of people would um, hop in them first thing and just steamroll through the rest of the level just, just in that. They'd even pass on playing as the hero um, in the second one. Um, but even if it is on rails and it's just a, a guided thing and all you're doing is aiming, I, I feel like that's a better way to kind of balance things out because it it'll it'll give like the the ATATs like a certain amount of time to get to a certain point. So it kind of lets the ground game develop, and if they can't do it at a certain point, you're going to get support from the ATAT rather than like having the ATAT lead lead the charge and again start steamrolling through everything i think in a way it'll help balance the the gameplay out and not make the the empire the more favorable side because they have access to the the strongest weapons in the level now uh david now is asking if we think the atsts are drivable or on rails uh 
I I seriously think they'll be Thank drivable. You, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Like I'm not hitting my. I'm not hitting my uh, push to talk. <laughs> Uh, David in the stream is asking if we think the ATSTs will be drivable on or on rails. I definitely I think, think they'll so. be drivable. I mean, it could be both, right? Like, it just depends on how, if it's uh, like multiplayer mission versus co-op campaign or something. I don't know how they're going to have it strategized or sorry, laid out. Are there, is there going to be like a co-op? Um, I think they announced that in the press conference that they there's going to be like well there's going to be uh multiplayer against bots so i think you could do that with like a friend there's not a campaign as far as we know or as far as they said another thing that a lot of people are upset about is there's not going to be a clone wars era at launch either Ugh. yeah it's it's just galactic civil war now that i mean and including the well, the newest entry with could that, that be battle like of a good Jakku DLC? or whatever. Yeah, that could be a good DLC. I, I understand why people are upset. It seems like they're removing features from the game, but uh, at the same time, do you really want just like a re rehashed version of the same thing, or do you want something new? I think with all the new stuff we're, they're bringing to the table, the fact that we're losing the Clone Wars and then eventually we're going to be gaining uh, the Force Unleashed, like, uh, what, era, I guess. Kind of makes up I for feel it. Like, uh, I feel like since this is their first version of this game, like it, it's got to go through the same steps as the old Battlefront series did, where... They, they get this new IP, like, they start developing for it, and granted there are, like, preconceived notions of what should be in the game, but you gotta think at, at it from their perspective. They gotta make sure the core, like, fighting, like, all the ground game and all that stuff is right before you try to throw in all these extra features, and if, if they want to add it through DLC or if they want to continue to hone that experience before they add something major like space, then I, I think they chose the right path by focusing on one era, one, like, um, like just the ground battles. I, I, I feel in that sense they, they went the right way and people got to kind of relax on all the extra features because either through a sequel or DLC, it, it's coming. Did I say Force Unleashed? I meant Force Awakens. We all know what you meant. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the way I look at it, I guess, is that you're not going to please everybody. And if people have to pick something about the game to complain about, and the only thing they can find is that there's no Clone Wars era, I think the game's still going to be good. There are yeah, a ton of other I'm questions. I'm playing it. I don't care. Oh, Takora's playing it. It's got to be a good it, game. It doesn't matter. Yeah, I mean, come on. Like, it's an experience. I, I can't be... This is not, like, Cisco and Ebert of the movie reviews. Like, I'm not that snobby. I'm playing it. I'm going to have a good time. Y'all can be jealous if you don't want to come with me. That's it. Uh, a couple other differences that I re remember reading about. We were not going to have... Uh, we, was you're not going to have player classes... Instead, you're going to have like unlocks and customizable, like a, you ba like a, basically you get one weapon kit and you can like change the attachments and your equipment, and then that's what you spawn with or something. So I guess is that like more of like a Call of Duty or, Koro, you've played the more recent Battlefields. How did they how did they structure their class system? Um, in in the most recent ones, there's they still have your your basic like assault, um, like recon and all that jazz. Uh, but um, the lines really did become blurred when you unlock specific weapons because um, there are certain types of weapons that are usable with any class, like depending on how you customize your loadout. Um, and then there, uh, as far as I know or remember, there's certain weapons that you can only use as a specific class. But for the most part, a majority of the unlockable weapons and such are usable with pretty much any class. It's only like the um, the the buffs and um, specific like tools or secondary weapons, like the the engineers repair, like blowtorch or repair torch, whatever. Um, 
and the assaults like med kit but other than that the the actual weapons themselves uh the, those lines have been blurred a lot with the the most recent releases yeah i'm sure i mean it's it's gonna be a fun game it's star wars it's in the universe we all know and love it's a reboot of a franchise that we've been waiting years for a reboot for um the hero thing i'm a little iffy on the hero thing but if I know anything about the way DICE handles their play servers, I can almost guarantee you that there will be hero-free servers that you can join. Right? Like, it's, it's going to be a server yeah, setting. Yeah, there, there's going to be, like... Yeah, you, you can... It'll be an, end up being one of those options where you can turn, like, heroes or uh, vehicles or maybe just air vehicles off... Uh, there's there's going to be um, those types of servers running if if they allow the same kind of server customization that they put into uh, Battlefield 4. So for Tick, since Tick hasn't played a prior Battlefront, uh, in Battlefront 2 they introduced heroes that you could play as, so like Luke Skywalker, Darth Vader, whoever. And essentially, once you got enough points or or did well enough you would have the option of respawning as a hero. And you would kind of have like a health bar that would drain slowly over time. But every time you killed somebody, you would re recover a little bit of it. And these hero units were, were OP as hell. I mean, you could, as they Luke Skywalker, <laughs> you could jump into the middle of a field with like 20 stormtroopers and just massacre them all. And since you get health back as you eat for each person you kill... It was like, you're almost unstoppable. The only thing that could stop you was, like, a vehicle. Or a person with that can play shots really well from a very, very far distance. So, what they kind of have already said in this is that... And they haven't released all the information, but they said that heroes will be static spawns. So it'll be like a pickup. So when somebody picks up this item, they become the he a hero for a set amount of time. And that got a lot of, a lot of like, uh, people lashing out, like saying that that's not a good idea because it's just going to be camped like the rocket launcher in Halo. Well, they can do that by doing spontaneous spawns. I mean... Well, I think that maybe that's only for one game mode. Like, we don't, we don't know until the game comes out. We don't know if that's, like, there's one specific game mode where heroes are static spawns and then it's, like, the traditional way on the other ones or what. They just, they released one bit of information and everybody all of a sudden thinks they see the whole picture. Yeah, I'm not worried about it. I'm playing. We know you're playing. I'm trying to have a discussion. <laughs> <laughs> I understand, but I mean, like, that. I, I don't know. I, I can't be upset about something that I haven't even seen if it's going to be there and speculating. Like, See, it I've doesn't matter. Heard... They have my money. I just pre-ordered whatever. <laughs> See, I've also heard that um, unlike in the second Battlefront where um, heroes were level specific, I heard that they're... Um, that I believe this was just a rumor going around as well, but I heard that... Um, in certain levels, you'd have the option to pick which hero you enter the battle as as well. I'm not sure if you heard anything along those lines. No, honestly, I, I did a surprisingly little am amount of reading on this game. I probably should have done more before we started this video, but YOLO. Um, no, I just know that it until the game comes out, who knows? They can tell us that... that Everybody plays as a hero, but that could be in hero mode. That like just like Battlefront Two had that. You know right. what I mean? We we don't know. It's people. I feel like people will just rage over anything that they can rage over just to hear themselves rage. I don't know. Um, is there any any features that you want to see? I mean, obviously, space would be the big one. Um. Because that that was that was a really big and fun mode that they put into um, the second Battlefront. But uh, going back to what I said earlier, it 
it, the rest of the game needs to feel right and it needs to be like honed before they they worry about some some big um, a addition to the game like like space. Yeah, space. Um, I'm definitely glad we got to see Hoth because I'm I'm concerned with the different maps that we're gonna get and how right, the size right. of them. Like I was really concerned when. In the, in the trailer, the rebel soldier runs out the front door of Echo Base and there's an AT-AT like breathing down their neck already. I was like, oh wow. oh wow, those maps are really small. But then when they showed when the TIE the Fighter, flyover. exactly, how yeah. far out the TIE Fighter was able to go. And you could even see the shield generator way in the background. So like there, there was definite space to the level. It was just condensed to this like little corner of it. And that was probably for dramatic effect for the video. Right. Um, tick anything other than like a, tight, a mode similar to Titan mode that you want to see, or that's well, that's really all I want to see in it because I think I would be thrilled just doing like that Hoth battle. I think it was very like capture the flag CTF based. Um, so I'm fine with that. I want to see some different types of mode play, and I'm sorry to say it, I want to see some girl characters. Yeah, Princess Leia was playable in Battlefront 2. Um, I don't know about, like, generic troopers, though. Did they have... Yeah, actually, the sniper. Wasn't the rebel marksman a female yes. in one of them? Yes. Okay. Cool. Um, I guess uh, that's really all that we have to talk about. Can you guys think of any other topics r just on Battlefront? Because uh, we can move on to the other Star Wars game that was announced. I'm good. <laughs> no, I mean, it, everything's been said that can be said pretty much. Uh, yeah, just take my money. We're, we're, yeah, we're all excited. I mean, we've only seen a small snippet of choreographed gameplay, also quote-unquote, uh, for Endor, and then the the newest trailer which we just watched for Hoth but um, just can't wait to see more uh, levels and see what other kind of game modes as Tick was saying will come uh, it, it we just need to see more I mean we're, we're only a couple months away from it already but we know so little for a game that's coming out in a relatively soon uh, time frame you know, they see competitive league play. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> they haven't said anything about beta for it yet, have they? I don't think so. Not to my knowledge, no. I think they did say something when I just pre-ordered that you get to be one of the first to play on some planet. Oh, I bet you that would be. Um... It begins with the J. Yeah, the new Jakku. one, Jakku from from the new movie. That's another thing. When does the game drop versus the, the movie? The move, the it's game comes out first. Really? But the new era, the Force Awakens era, is going to be DLC that comes out after the movie, I believe. Didn't they do that with um, Battlefront 2? They kind of timed the release of the game with... Episode with... 3, right? Yeah, because the whole battle over Coruscant thing was was huge, and people wanted to jump into that fight in game, and they got that chance before the movie came out. See, I don't, I don't remember actually. I do remember uh, Mustafar, right, being able to fight on that, and not really knowing like what what the the idea was with it. So yeah, that'll be interesting. Um, alright, but the other Star Wars game, which the name of it I can't even remember right now because all I could think of was Star Wars Hearthstone. I'm like, Star Wars <laughs> Minecraft. Um, did, did you see that one, Tick, or were you not? I did not, and now I'm very excited. Yeah, so they announced a new... Galaxy of Heroes. That was it. Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes. Which is going to be a mobile game, so we'll be able to play it on <gasps> iOS and Android. And all they said, they showed no gameplay of it yet, but they said it is a Star Wars collectible card game. 
They said it will span both the prequel and original trilogies uh, featuring characters from all six films. Uh, I'm reading this from an article. It says you'll collect ships, items, and characters and use them to build a more powerful deck than you could possibly imagine. Oh my god, like take even more of my money. Yep. I cannot wait. Star Wars Hearthstone. That's all when I can is, say. They didn't yeah. when that's coming out? Uh, it says later this year. Oh, There's no God. specific time frame, just later this year. All right, I'm making a note. I'm going to find a way to get in on that. Hold on. So, yeah. I am super excited uh, I'm just going to start. All my change that I usually, like, convert into Amazon gift card stuff is now going to go into Star Wars CCG. Which, uh, no, can we was, just, uh... can we take two minutes to talk about the Star Wars trading card game that was in Galaxies? And how perfect it was? And how perfect it was. <laughs> and the fact... that was in Galaxies was as perfect as it could be. And the fact that there are so many Galaxies emulators Evolve. out there. There are so many Galaxies emulators out there. Even Project NGE, which is a NGE emulator. And none of them are bringing back the trading card game. Well, it sounds like an opportunity for you to learn to code and bring it back yourself. I am going to let my viewers comment on that and see who is up for the task. And I will I will help uh, pull data <laughs> on what the different cards did, because I played the shit out of that game. Now, there was a um, an argument that came up earlier saying, seeing as how it's an EA card game, um, a lot of people are worried that free is going to be used lightly and it might be a pay-to-win scenario. What are your thoughts on that? Um, that's no different than Hearthstone. Well, right, fair enough. No, I don't know that that's... If it's like Hearthstone, I don't care. But if it's... It, the pay, pay to win in terms of what, though? You'd pay for card packs, right? I mean, that's... Ideally, that's what you... Th when you think collectible card game, the only pay to pay walls that I can think of are card packs. Unless you're going to limit somebody to how many games they can play, you know, in a certain amount of time, then that's, that's something totally different, and that's kind of stupid. Yeah, I mean, that brings up an interesting thing, because my as soon as, as soon as Cole said that, I was like, hmm, why don't they just matchmake people who have bought similar packs... You know, so at least you have deck similarities. Um, you mean but, like, oh, this person bought five card packs, patch, match them up with someone else who bought five card packs? Mm hmm yeah. I think that, eh, would that limit your options too much? It depends on how many people they have I think have it playing. would limit your options too much. I think that's why they have the, the dust crafting component. It gives you the opportunity without paying for anything um, to get the same cards faster you know, in less random ways. So, you know, I don't think that's pay to, I don't think that's pay to win though. Like, it's not. It's... For me, it's like, I have an MMO. I don't want to grind to level 80. I'm going to buy an account and I'm going to buy against the EULA, these particular sets of gear that make me unbelievable. And now you can't stop me. And I didn't really get there on my own. Right. Pay to win is if somebody can only get something through by paying. Right. If it's just you, a timing differential. Right. It's it's pay to play or pay to get better faster. Pay Correct. pay pay for lack of patience. Well, pay for lack of patience or pay for a faster experience than you know grinding it. It's just it has to be available without paying, and you know I think then it's just bitching where it's like, well. You know, I'm going to get trounced every time I play for X number of months than when the cards drop. It's like, okay, well, you need a richer life if that's the biggest gripe you have. Yeah, I've played many different mobile games where, you know, you can do X number of things in amount, a certain amount of time and then you have to wait. And, like, you've played games like that, right? You played Farmville. Isn't Farmville like that? Uh, like you, yes. s you set some stuff up, and then you have to wait for like a long, like eighteen hour timer or something before something's mm -hmm. done. Yeah. Built. If we're going to long Star Wars games, Tiny Death Star. Yeah, 
So I, I played a lot of different games like that, and if you ever read the reviews on those games, people post things like, this game is so dumb, I can only play for about 10 minutes and then I have to wait until the next day. Like, that's the point. Like, those games are designed to be played for really short bursts. It's not like a Final Fantasy game where you can sit there and play it for 18 hours straight. Well, it's not designed for that reason. It's designed to draw you in, and because you're so drawn in, and get you, you to come back. You you give up your cash so that you can play faster than the timing, the timer limits. Fair enough, but if you go into it knowing that those types of games are designed that way, is it really fair to give a game the bad review because of that? I think people are just you know people want to find reasons to bitch, you know. So, yeah, I right. mean, I've heard it all over the I've heard it all over the realm, you know, like, oh, I hate waiting for my energy, or I, I mean, I personally absolutely hated like having to blast friends in order to advance games, and eventually just gave up playing any of those games because it was just like, yeah, I don't know, so no, see, needy. It was so Jehovah Witness. Kyle is saying back in, to your earlier thing. in stream chat, Star Wars Commander is totally pay to win. It's not pay to win. I played Star Wars Commander. I stopped playing it because I got bored with it, but I didn't put a cent into it, and I still had fun with it. All you have to pay for in those games is if you want to build things quicker, if you don't want to wait 24 hours for your troops to finish training. It's not pay to win. It's pay because you don't feel like playing something else. Right, it's pay because you're impatient. I think what you said, but you said something paid for pay, whatever you said before, it's right. So I think if this uh, Galaxy of Heroes ends up being anything like Hearthstone design, which it, it has to be, when you hear digital collectible card game nowadays, like... They're obviously following the, the current trend, which also, um, what I said earlier, how Bethesda's got one coming, but uh, it, that seems to be the trend right now, and they're all obviously following in the footsteps of Hearthstone's success. Yeah, Hearthstone has exploded. I mean, they have worldwide championships now. BlizzCon has a tournament every year for it now, where the top prize, I think, for the one in 2014 was $100,000. Yeah, I love this game. Um, speaking of, I'm going to be starting a Hearthstone playlist on my channel also, so for those of you watching this video, if you have no idea what we're talking about, uh, check my channel for that. Check it out. I was streaming it today. Yeah, even Tick's going to start posting Hearthstone videos because I'm totally going to get her to start a YouTube channel. Uh, I'm a long way away from that. Well, you just don't play enough. Well, I, I, I have what's called video game ADD, and I just hop to the newest, greatest thing and play it out until I'm done and then move on to the next, and that hops between... PC and consoles sometimes. Like, because Hearthstone has daily quests. How many dailies right. have you completed? Oh my god, I've only really missed like two. I'm probably in like the teens, maybe. Of how many you've completed? Yeah, uh, I. Early on, it they're they're easy, but when you start getting the the win with so and so specific. Uh, that's when it got a little slower. Plus, I was also playing, like, people also using basic decks early on, so you can hammer a couple out. It's totally random, dude. When you, when you go into a play game, if it's not ranked, it matches you up with a totally random player. Right. So the number of games you win has nothing to do with who you're up against, or how easy yeah. it is. Yeah, well... You just gotta play enough. If you only right. have to win two games with a certain class, you can't expect to go play two games and win them both. You might have to play like six or seven, but even that only takes like an hour. You, you'll get there, or you could just forget it completely and wait until Gal uh, Guardians of the... I'm gonna call it Guardians of the Save Galaxy. Save your quarters! Yeah, wait until Galaxy of Heroes comes out. I cannot wait. Um, the only other thing I can think of, because we're it's been about fifty minutes, so we could talk about one more thing. Um, is the new the Old Republic expansion, which I don't think Tick saw that either. But Cora, you and I watched that together, right? Yeah, I, I watched the uh, 
the press conference from Actually, beginning to end. Let's watch that right now. Let's pull it up. I'm going to find a safe place to stop, because I think you'd like to watch it. Yeah, I, I want to watch it, sure. I'm ignoring that Kyle put Mirror's Edge into chat right now. That's, oh. I guess, a podcast for a different day. So was this one called Rise of an Empire? Knights of the Fallen Empire. It's a good thing you have Wiki Koro here. Yeah, I know. Here, I got it. Whoops. Here you go. Get that up on stream. All right, I'm paused at zero. Coral, let me know. Mirror's Edge makes my toes curl. Like, legit, in real life. Sorry, being a little slow here. Now, I have a feeling a lot of people watching this video on my channel are going to have mixed uh, mixed uh, feelings about me talking about the Old Republic since many of you watch my channel specifically for my Star Wars Galaxies content. Um... So let me take this opportunity to say that I I don't think The Old Republic is a bad game. I think both Star Wars The Old Republic and Star Wars Galaxies are incredibly fun MMOs. They're just two totally, totally different uh, styles of game. Experiences. Yeah, they have different agendas. So the way I uh, compare them, or the way I explain them to people when they ask me to compare them, is I say it's like trying to compare a sandbox to a roller coaster. The Old Republic is like a roller coaster. You're on a set track. It's got its high points, its low points. It's not really up to you in what direction to go, right? Like, the game is going to guide you and say, this is where you have to go next. You have to go to this planet, talk to this person, go here, kill these guys, come back. Uh, but it's still very exciting. It's a fun ride, and you do at some point get to an end. And when you get to the end, you have the option of getting back on and doing it again or going to a different ride in the theme park. The sandbox, on the other hand, there's nothing there when you enter the sandbox. Just like in Galaxies, when you create a character, it throws you into that world with, you know, no goal. It's up to you to build your own world around you, to establish your own goals, and then to pursue them. And that's that's really it. So you kind of need more of an imagination to, to have more fun in a sandbox. But, uh... They're, they're both really fun. Yeah, it's more to what you're looking to get out of the game. Well, I also think it has the GoldenEye impact, right? Like, when GoldenEye came out, and it was the first time you could really do FPS competition, co-op, well, like, split screens and stuff, and people would, like, carve cardboard boxes so that they couldn't, like, cheat and look over on the same monitor. Like, there are only certain games that come out in each genre or each, you know brand franchise that have that first time feeling and galaxies is just going to have that for a really long time all right so everyone paused at like zero or one second yep tick mm -hmm. yeah all right mm -hmm. three two one go Star Wars The Old Republic offers RPG gamers the chance to step into the center of their own Star Wars saga. What so is if that you ring? love Star Wars and want a deep experience, then start playing now and get ready, because something new is on the way. Our fans have told us exactly what they want in the future. More story, Bioware-style story, with a player-driven really? arc where choices matter, and we've been listening. Today, I'm proud to announce that we are taking Star Wars The Old Republic back to the roots of Bioware-style storytelling with the release of our new expansion, 
Knights of the Fallen Empire. This is your story, your and way. The crowd goes and it's coming October 27th, <laughs> know, 2015. Right? Knights of the Fallen Empire puts you in the center of the battle against a dangerous new enemy faction. You will choose your path. You will join or betray companions old and new, and you will make choices that will shape the fate of the entire galaxy as well as your own. The expansion will deliver on the hallmarks of what makes a great Bioware game. New worlds to explore, new companions to recruit, and a dynamic story that players will be able to shape based on the choices they make. And in appreciation of our players' support over the years, Knights of the Fallen Empire will be free to all of our subscribers. I love the way he worded first that. Look at the story yeah, I made sure I put that in the Empire. Thank you. I made a force be with you. We'll be free to all of our subscribers. <laughs> warrior. Oops! That's what my prologue would have looked like if I'd seen it in real life. Spoilers! <laughs> yeah, I, I was Boros in channel. That. I didn't. He knows what class I have. View the full trailer online. I missed that. What? There's more? Yeah, I didn't see that either. Alright, so... I mean, let's talk about that. First of all, I'll say what I saw, where what I said the first time I saw it, which is... Yeah, that looks really incredible, but uh, no... The trailers have always looked great. <laughs> yeah, Swill Tours always produced brilliant trailers that have nothing to do with the gameplay. At the same time, I'm curious to see uh, these new worlds and this interesting dynamic between these two brothers. <laughs> I want to call them yin and yang. What really interests me, though, is I wonder... it Because it seemed like they showed a lot of different things happening in that trailer. And I wonder how much of that happened like pre-gameplay. And how much of that happens during gameplay? Because they said they want to bring back traditional Bioware gameplay for this expansion, right? So when I hear that, I think like Mass Effect and KOTOR. Because what else? And Dragon Age, right? Right. So, and it's going to be heavily story driven. So I wonder if those cutscenes would actually happen like as you do certain quests and, and progress your story. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, especially when they, like, in the way they speak, um, going back to the free to every subscriber, but, um, they, they, they seem almost cryptic with it when they're saying it's a whole, like, new, like, story-driven experience, but, um, like, what would they classify the rest of the game as? Because it, it was also story-driven, but still very open in a in a sense so it's like do you 
trigger certain events to trigger those cutscenes, like you were saying, or is that like the intro to the the expansion itself, and you start at the very end of it all? Right. Well, don't forget, since since there are eight playable classes, and each class has kind of their own story arc, that means this expansion's really going to be introducing eight new storylines. Right. So, I don't know. I think it's just additional content structured the way that it already, you know, Sword Tour's already structured. I don't know what it is, but something tells me it's more than that. I mean, maybe, but it sounded very much the same. Like, our, our, you know, our fans want more story, and you can recruit new companions. And I'm like, I'm like okay, it sounds... Like, it's just a different storyline. There's also been information released saying that um, it says it will let high-level players continue the story while at the same time letting new players create a high-level character. Yeah, so they'll go oh, the so way of Blizzard where you'll get, like, exactly... Yeah, you can instantly jump and the level cap will jump up to 65. Yeah. Play to win. Just kidding. But here's the here's the thing that's catching my ear. And it's the, the fact that they said you'll be able to, you know, recruit new allies and betray them. When you take that and add that into it's going to be story-driven, you know, like traditional Bioware story content, you can't do that with the existing story structure in SWOTOR, right? Like, sure, you can have conversations with your companions, but your dialogue options don't really have any impact on the story. It may let you skip, uh, like, a a group of mobs in a dungeon or an instance here and there. But ultimately, regardless of what dialogue options you choose, the same thing's going to happen. And I don't see that happening in this. I see your dialogue options having a, a much greater impact on um, what companions get to stay with you. I mean, because in Mass Effect, your choices, you could actually end Mass Effect with any number of companions. You can, you yourself can die. Right. You can, that can't happen in Swotor, but I think that's what this is trying to do, is make the older public more like Mass Effect and Dragon Age. Yeah, you're basically getting um, an add-on section that could very well be reminiscent of just this suicide mission piece of that Mass Effect game, of the second one. And because of that... Each player's experience, well, not each player's experience, but different players will have varying outcomes of this expansion. And I think that is what's going to separate this from any of the prior ones. Yeah, well, we'll see. It's yeah, always I mean, a pleasure more. to have you on TeamSpeak with us, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we'll see. Like, I, I'm not a big fan of the whole storyline dialogue telltale games which to me is nothing but an automated coloring book really i just i don't i don't know all right well i don't know we'll see see we should take bets on it we should write like little predictions and see which of us is correct oh don't even get me started on my halo 5 (laughs) (laughs) i'm not even starting you on halo 5 all right well that uh we pretty much talked about everything Star Wars that happened at E3, so I think this is probably a good point to wrap things up. Uh, do you guys have any closing statements you want to make? I'll let you go first. I don't have anything to say. I said it all. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, everything's pretty much been said, and when the games actually come out, we'll know everything we wanted to know, and some games will get sooner than later. And we can speculate all we want, but we won't know for sure until it's in our hands. So, can't wait. Yeah, I think people, they just need to hold their hold their opinions about stuff that hasn't been released yet until after they actually get to play it. Because, obviously, everything you see at E3 is going to be structured in a way to get you excited about what they're making. Even if it's not 100% accurate, it's always been like that. I remember seeing gameplay trailers of uh, certain levels in games back when I was still in school that uh, never made it to the final cut. And you'd go back and you'd watch the trailer and be like, that's not even in the game. Like, why would they put that there? It's just to get you excited about it. 
So, all right. Well, thank you guys for helping me with this, being here and doing this little dialogue with me. Thanks for letting us kick off your yeah, new series. Yeah, thanks for letting us come talk. Since a little bit of sarcasm there, but that's okay. No. I'll deal with you later. <laughs> I bet you will. I'm not sticking around. Get out of my sabak den. Um, one last thing, though. Since you guys are both participants in the Jewel of Ryloth... hey -o. Bum, bum, bum. Uh, you guys excited to do our first group session? So, being the first prologue story done, I have been waiting the longest, and... You we, know it's been we, almost we just a year, need to get right? this going. I, I know. I, I try to forget that, but, uh... I, I am beyond anxious to get this thing going. It's <laughs> It's been too long. And again, uh, for those watching the video that don't know, I have a Star Wars role-playing game, tabletop, D20 system series called Jewel of Ryloth, which is a campaign that I'm running on my own, uh, that Takora and Koro are both uh, members of, along with one other, uh, Tarno, or Reese, we like to call him because, you know, that's his name, um, that are, are the players in the series. So, very soon, I'm not going to give you guys a release date yet. You can kind of imagine this as being my E3. <laughs> soon, TM, we'll have our very first group session, but the series has already been started on my channel. Each player has had a little one-on-one -on -one prologue session that none of the other players are allowed to watch, so they get their own little opportunity to have their own secrets and everything that the other players don't know. And uh, it'll be up to Cora. them. It'll be up to them to decide how much of that they reveal. <laughs> Spoilers. No, that's not true. That's <laughs> impossible. So we'll get you a date for when that is uh, coming out. Very soon. very soon. Yeah, because I'm I'm going to hear about it every day until we do it tomorrow. All right. So thanks for watching, guys. I hope this was entertaining. Something for you to listen to while you game. Look forward to more topics, more Star Wars topics, and new uh, guests on here. Mobius One and guests. And we'll see Coral. you next time. Bye. Hey everyone, before we let you go, uh, unfortunately, Takora, Koro, and I had recorded that whole episode before EA actually released their second Battlefront video, which is the co op video. So here we all are again. You guys want to say hi again? Hi again. Hello again. So we have this for you, in case you haven't already seen it, which many of you probably have, but we wanted to share our thoughts and opinions about it, and actually Takora hasn't seen it yet herself, so this will be her first time. Uh, everyone queued up at zero? Yep. Yes, sir. All right, three, two, one, go. Oh. Not my best landing. Heck, let's go! This is awesome. You made it, thank the false. We've located your crash site, but it looks like the Empire will reach you first. Prepare Ooh, to defend rocks. yourself until we can get there. Just the sound design is amazing. Here they come! I also like how... Both places have two distinct fields to them between the snow and the rocks. So it's like wave defense. So if you look at the top, it tells you how many enemies are left in the wave. And they have to survive for 15 waves. There's different unit types right there. Oh, that's cool. I'll be in That was interesting. It was third person, but the character was to the right of the camera, like he was left-handed. I wonder if you just put that in the options. They can have like a shoulder preference. The rock's falling. Press square, I guess, to reload, like to cool, cool the blaster down. I like this structure of the in the back of my
Yeah, it's kind of ridiculous. No, oh, man. I mean, how can you not want to play that? Even a non-Star Wars fan has to admit that is absolutely gorgeous. It is really pretty, and you're right, the sound design is ridiculous. I mean, imagine even being a sound designer to have that as a library of tools you could even choose from. Like, I, I die. I mean, you. Pew, I'm pew. pulling up the other trailer. I just want to show one more time uh, for the video. The sound of the Imperial Walker, like, taking steps. Like, the AT-AT. Targeting our base! Like, you can feel it shake the ground and every, every time its foot hits the ground. You could just feel the shockwave. So, alright. I mean, that looks absolutely ridiculous. I can't wait to play it. Tick, I know you and I are probably going to play the hell out of it as soon as it comes out. Um, well, you know, if you're nice. <laughs> yeah. Forget me then. That, that's cool. <laughs> well, it de that I mean, it brings up the thing. It said play solo or co-op, so I'm assuming it's only two-player co-op. We saw them doing split screen, um, so we don't know if there's going to be m more than two players at a time. There could be, maybe online. That's a good question, actually, because that split screen is typically like a console interface. Well, that is. This is this is all being demoed on PS4. Remember? Right, but did you see anything that was co-op PC? Well, it'll it would be online or land. I'm assuming it wouldn't be really split screen. No, of course it won't be split screen. But my point is, is like, what if it doesn't come out with co-op for PC on the same day, or you know? Oh, I'm it, I'm sure it will. It better. Yeah, better. But uh, I I also wanted to also talk about that they don't have a video of it, but they did announce in an interview that there's also going to be a Starfighter mode. Now this is kind of big, kind of a big deal because do you need they're... a moment, actually? Well, no, because that would be a big deal for you. <laughs> well, it's a big deal because they're not going to have space battles at launch, and that was something that everybody was really upset about because the space battles were really fun in Battlefront 2. Um, so it, it is, it was a disappointment to hear that they weren't having space battles at launch, but now that we're we're getting confirmed uh, confirmation that they are having a dedicated Starfighter mode. So even though that means it's going to be atmospheric combat, I think not only will that be fun, but it means the groundwork for a purely for space battles is already in the game. So it's definitely going to be added, I would say. I mean, that's that's like a, a fair point because, um, uh, I mean, since DICE is making it in, in like, speaking in terms of Battlefield 4, they have... Uh, like an air superiority mode and it's all just aerial combat I, I could see them borrowing from that specifically but I'm agreeing with you in the sense that the groundwork's there it's practically they just need to reskin it and add like capital ships and go from there but um, you'll still be able to get your your dog fighting itch scratched yeah, I mean, we were talking about game modes a little bit after we stopped recording earlier, and I've had to have watched this Hoth Walker Assault trailer about 15 times now, just combing over it, re reading all the the text pop-ups, like, I'm looking at the point systems, you get extra points for killing the top player on the other team, looking let's at all- Let's look at that again, let's slow it down again. Sure, I let's pull it up. It. So let's, we'll do a breakdown real quick. Sounds good. Yeah, just pull it back up to one. One second. Alright, I'm ready whenever you are. Ready. Three, two, one, go. Look at that. Warning. Amazing. Alright, so... I mean, I guess I'll say pause if I feel like there's something I want to talk about. You guys do the same? Okay. That yeah, works. So I think Tig, you were talking about the frame or the uh, textures here. I'm just super impressed impressed with the frame rate, how smooth everything looks, and the lighting. Just pause real quick. So look at first of all, it says pre-alpha gameplay at the bottom, which is incredible. 
Um, but next, let's look at like the objectives. If you look at the mini map on the bottom left, you can see four different little gray icons that represent the uplinks that the, these guys are going for. So it's interesting that they run past this one without activating it. Because there's one, if you look on the left, it says it's like six meters away from this guy, and you can see it on the radar. That's um, called strategery. He's obviously leaving it for other people to get. Well, what this what this game mode reminds me of, and Cor, I think Cora and I were the ones talking about this after you left, is that uh, we were talking about the size of the maps and the fact that your this battlefront is only going to support forty players on a server, which seems pretty low uh, for an online game, especially considering usually the, the typical sizes of battlefield maps. Right? Like how many how many people can be in a battlefield three server or four? Well, they had um, cool. the modes where. Um, especially on next gen or now current gen, um, just speaking in terms of console, they upped it to the regular PC uh, amount and they had dedicated servers for massive, uh, I believe it's, what, 64? Okay, well, see, I'm used to, I'm used to, like, didn't Battlefield 2 used to have, like, 128 players or something? It was, like, 64 per team? Well, you weren't getting that on console. <laughs> I think it's 64 <laughs> max. <laughs> I could be wrong. Like, that's how long it's been. But for some reason, I remember having over 100 players in a game. But anyway, that's besides the point. So if you look, and you can see, it looks almost like the whole Rebel team is in this one room on the minimap. And and that leaves a lot of wasted space on the map, but then I started thinking, because to Corey, you and I have been playing a lot of Insurgency, what if this is, like, push? You we know? You have to, like, progress through each. Right, so like, each of these uplinks is, like, a capture point, and the Imperials have to take them in order. I mean, yeah, if there's, like, be. a natural progression to the level, take these certain ob amount of objectives, then move on to the next set. Which would also make sense why the ATAT -AT would be on rails. So the ATAT -AT is kind of pushing along. Maybe it'll it'll reach a certain part uh, of the map and stop until the next point is taken and then it'll progress. You know what I mean? Like yeah, that, but I think that just makes the, sense. Yeah, but the other thing you need to remember is this is a pre-alpha gameplay and having worked at a studio, this is done for cinematic view, not necessarily for what the objective play is. That's so true. I don't know, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't put too much into it just yet. Now, uh, one more thing I wanted to point out before we move on. Um, if you notice that the Solaston has like a yellow name bar above it. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder if they're going to make it easy and carry over from Battlefield, um, like the squatting up option. If you're going to run in squads of four and that's a easy way to distinguish where your players are at, where you're where your buddies are at two things first that was my initial reaction i that, i thought hey you know he's got a yellow name he's either like a squad member or maybe a party member or a chicken or, or a chicken <laughs> but designated chicken let's i mean let's cross our fingers and take it a step further what if he's like the commander and that's why he's a sullustin that could be it too right um you could have didn't like, the commander's the name in battlefield 2 be gold Oh. Yeah. Um, I know with the last, if we're going to keep referencing Battlefield, I know with the last one, the commanders weren't even a part of the match. Um, they were a completely separate slot, and they didn't take up a physical point on the ground in the, the last game. I'm still upset that I didn't play that, because I wanted to be the commander. Well, I did play it, but I didn't play the commander. But see, what he's saying is it was different. Because remember, in Battle in 2142 and BF2, the commander was actually physically present on the field. Oh, yeah, because I used to right. play that role. Yeah, he's saying and, that's, that's um, not how it is now. That wasn't the case in Battlefield 4. It was a completely separate slot, and you would actually vacate your slot in the server to take the one commander slot per side. Correct. So, I mean, here's hoping, but... Yeah. Um, I'm real gonna quick, go with squad... Before we move on, if you look at the, the UI on the lower right, you can see he's got binoculars, thermal detonator, five uses on that personal shield, and something on the right, I don't know if, it looks like a rocket, but maybe it's like uh, an airstrike or something, because it kind of has like crosshairs pointing on it. 
be a, it almost looks like a missile kind of thing yeah. um a missile with a trail and then the four points of a crosshair but all right you ready to resume yep mm -hmm. and go And I hear like the thermal detonator tick, the alarm going off in the background, it going back to that sound design. You can see partner avenged, kill streak bonus if you read the pop up text on the left. You'll see it again. You even have the Arabesh and uh, range on the binoculars he pulled up. Yeah, so this stormtrooper, he's got the same icons in the lower right, so he must be like the same class as the rebel. You can see shut down, the uplink, headshot bonus, stationary weapon damaged. So all of this brings me to another point, and we don't have to pause, I'll just talk over it, but I really want to see a metal system like the old BF2 and 2142 had, where you, if you like, blow up enough ships or you get enough kills using something, like a certain weapon, that you get like badges and medals that other players can see in your bio. Hold on, can we pause real quick? Go yeah, back pause. to about uh, 130. Okay. The smart rocket. Um, <laughs> <laughs> now you see uh, you got like the Star Destroyers and the Corellian Corvettes in the background. Yep. Or the um, Nebulon frigates. Yep. Uh, I had seen an article that they said they have this so-called Battle Beyond system where depending on how the fight's going on the ground, it'll be represented in that aerial fight. So if the stormtroopers are pushing um the frigates are going to be the first to blow up or if the the rebels holding them off for x amount of time you'll see the fight going more in their favor and it doesn't directly have um an effect on the match itself it's just reacting to what's going on in the ground just to give you like a added sense of like immersion almost cool. that is cool but that would be something i probably wouldn't even notice until like month four right you but, guys uh, would notice it, but I would be like, <laughs> did I kill the guy? Okay, cool. I just wanted to point in the fact that they were in the background and you see, like, frigates and stuff exploding, and that's probably because the rebels are being pushed back, and it it's just some of that, like, background noise that's going on. Well, while we're paused at 1.30, let's take a minute to, to look at the HUD on the bottom right again. we got totally different abilities here. Um, I have no idea what that first one would be. It looks almost like a mortar strike or artillery. Um, yeah, the top middle one. Maybe is maybe that, that the deployable could be one of those, shield? Like, either that, or yeah. that could be like that. Um, one of them could be the Y wing run. Yeah, and then obviously the jetpack, uh, and then we actually get our first look at the 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 pickups, which. Going back to that interview before E3, where one of the devs stated that the heroes would be static pickups in the game. It kind of makes more sense now that they're like this, and uh, if the maps are progressive, as we're kind of seeing in, in this case, it would be more okay with me for the heroes to be static pickups if maybe, like, the only pickup is at the very last, you know, uh, uplink of the map, and only one person gets to take it. So, like, you don't get the hero until the very end as, like, your last all-out effort to, to save the game kind of thing. Why are you worried about it? <laughs> I'm not worried no, I'm about serious. it. I'm just talking about it. Well, no, because you said the other day, like, uh, wasn't this what you were talking about when you were when you said you were worried about it being balanced because people would just camp those spawns? I'm not worried about it. People are worried about it. Oh, okay. But I think it's cool that you can pick up additional things. Like we see in this case, he picks up the smart launcher and then decides not to use it on the ATSD right away. I also realize that there's no real telltale sign of what he's actually picking up, though. It's kind of just a pickup floating marker, and it doesn't specify that it's a rocket launcher unless you know that the rocket launcher spawns there. Yeah, that, I mean, I agree, and I hope it stays that way, but all that's subject to change. Right. I have a feeling we'll, we'll actually see the rocket launcher laying on the ground. The icon itself might change, but I think they'll get the actual the physical item there. All right, All right. go from 130. Yep. And go. The bombers can't help us unless we protect the uplink. We can't do it without those Y wings. Come on. 
So I wonder if that dialogue is just flavor dialogue, like the bombers not being able to help, or if that's actually a gameplay feature. I know. Uh, where is the rocket? Like I'm looking on the HUD even. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm trying to think back. and see if that's bot, if it's that bottom one. Yeah, because he just hit it and it turned into the rebel. So yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. So uh, I also noticed his health health regenerates in this like it does in Call of Duty. So there's no more health packs like the old Battlefronts. Hmm. I didn't actually notice that. So you can see the three different modes of fire on the at, -AT. On the left you have like the light lasers, then on the right you have the heavy lasers, then the top is the orbital strike. Oh, I still want to drive that thing. <laughs> look at that, look at that, all those points. It's like beep beep beep, Oh, right, here's um, some to note. Uh, if you go back... Him? Yeah, if you go back to him calling in that orbital strike, uh, where is that at? That's about 2.30 again. Okay. Um, you see the lightning bolt timer at the bottom. It looks like another timer again, and I believe this might be used like a hero because the the timer, whenever he takes damage or whatever, drops. But after you see he racks up a couple kills in the um, orbital strike, it goes back up, like similar to what they're saying the heroes might be, where you can earn some time back depending on if you're getting kills or not. It would make sense for the ATAT to be the imperial hero in this case. All right. and you, yeah, I mean, we can move on from there. I just wanted to re-emphasize that. Yeah, I'll watch it. Watch the uh, the lightning bolt timer at the bottom. Ready? And go. Yeah, you can see it going down. Yeah, and it goes back up. Man, it would be so satisfying to snipe a, a speeder out of the air like that. Yeah, it would be. That was always my objective. I feel like in vulnerable two. up there on them stilty legs. I'm trying to make sense out of like the throttle at the bottom. So like I, I guess that you can tell like he's full throttle, but then it looks like he's got a boost ability on the right. And then you go into the tow cable, and I'd like to know if this is automated or not, because it switches to third person here, and I. I think it's still, he's still controlling that, but it's awfully fast. Yeah, um, I think there was a, a reward for making a successful pass, so you have to be in some form of control of that, but you're right, it, it is moving extremely fast. And then this actually just, this brings back so many memories of Battlefront 1, like doing the different aerial maneuvers and stuff. How yeah. they consume, like you, if you watch the yellow bar at the bottom, when he goes up and does this roll, you see how it consumes that whole bar? And then the bar slowly recharges. Oh, that's just his speed? See, I don't know, I'm, I gotta figure out what these HUDs mean. But, uh, going back to, like, the rush mode or, um, progressive battle, as soon as those TIE Fighters came involved, you could see this shield generator way in the background. Here, There's pause plenty it. of open field. Just pause it anywhere around like 4 to 4.10. Notice if you look at the, the attack icons that are pointing to the ATATs, you can actually see the percentage of their health remaining. So you can try to stop their push for the shield generator, but um... Well, so it is kind of like Takora was asking for like a titan mode. It totally, it totally is the objective of the rebels to take out those two walkers in this. I'm on it. <laughs> Nailed it. I think it's crazy. I think it's cool because, like, where I paused it, I can actually see the lasers, like, the laser effect paused in the background. Which I, I probably wouldn't have noticed before. I just love all of the effects. All right. <laughs> yep. Go. What number? What? Right. I'll, I'm at 410, but it doesn't matter. Just go. We're all close enough. Yeah, I just saw that top player killed pop up. Yeah, we were talking about. Looked... Go ahead. I was saying it also looked like he was able to switch to third person on the fly, so they might designate that to one button rather than have to go through a menu. Well, it was a one button in previous Battlefronts also. Was it? I never yeah. really switched back and forth, so I never paid attention to that. 
and then obviously this end is heavily scripted. Yes. But still, I mean, it's cool. I'd like to know how effective uh, Luke Skywalker would be against the walker, though. Like, like in the movie, <laughs> if, you can, for that. if you can, like, you know, rope up and, and cut it open and throw the grenade in like you did in the movie, or if you just hack at its legs and chip away at the paint or what. Well, that'd be like a co-op type thing. That wouldn't really be a, a competitive type of thing. I don't know. I I can't get enough of this trailer. I just think it's no, amazing. No, I've watched it a million times. Although, there, there's one thing I'd like to point out that I just noticed. Um, right during the final seconds of the video where it's saying where it's available and all that, this trailer says actual gameplay footage, but at the end of the last one it said something along the lines of images may not... Let me see. Not all image representative of actual gameplay. Oh yeah, well that's because in the co-op one there were a couple clips of like the Star Destroyer crashing at the end and like the Stormtroopers getting off the shuttle. Those were obviously uh, okay. cutscenes. Didn't know if it was worth mentioning in that. Makes sense. But uh, yeah, I mean that's it. Uh, the, uh, like I said, I really I hope they include some sort of badge system. Um... Yeah, I don't know. I just I'm I'm almost speechless still as I watch it again. So it should be should be totally fun, and we're totally gonna have videos of it as soon as it comes out. The about day it the comes day. out. Absolutely. If my computer can handle it. All right. Uh, but yeah. So thanks for watching the rest of this. <laughs> it's almost like we did the whole thing again. But hey. We need to start planning the release party. Yeah, yeah, we'll right. have a release party for sure. Oh my god, it'd be so awesome. We'll, we'll have like it. a big old release party. We'll stream the whole thing. I'll make lots of food. Ah. All right. Uh, but lastly, before we go, uh, we did the whole video the other day and realized that we don't even have a name for this series yet. So, are, are we all kind of agreeing on the, the latest one? You think that's the best one? Absolutely. Yeah, I like it. Alright, so, Mobius1 here, and this has been the pilot episode for my new series, That's No Moon. Nailed it. Ba -dum ba -dum so, check back next time. Uh, we'll be talking about more stuff Star Wars, but for now, just watch this trailer like 30 times and you'll be good. So, we'll see you later. See ya. Peace.